I first want to start, well, welcome everybody from PPH. We just have a few items to go over before we go over your application, and um, we'll go ahead and get started with that. Uh, welcome to two people, um, Kayla Lubriel, is that how I say it, Kayla? Um, you got it. Okay. Kayla is a land use coordinator for the town of Hadley, and part of her duties is to be part-time staff to the CPA committee, which we're... I especially, I think, am excited <laughs> to have her on board, and she's even listened to old meetings to catch us up on minutes, and, and she's dove into an awful lot of things. So we'll talk a little bit more about her duties and, and stuff, but a warm welcome to Kayla. And um, and then also to Adam Bergolt. Is that how you say it, Adam? Um, yeah, that's right. Good. You, you nailed it, Mary. Yep. All right. <laughs> hey, everybody. Nice to meet you all. He's our newest member of the um, CPC, so it's great to have him on board. And um, Adam, oh, where's Denise? Good. Hi, Denise. Adam, what seat do you take on CPA? Are you at large or are you on a committee? Or At large. He's at, at large. Yeah. At large, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and appointed by the select board. And, um, and Adam, you had mentioned in the past when you were before you had become a member that you might be interested in being treasurer if you were put on the committee is that still something you might be interested in um it is uh yeah i'd be i'd be interested i'd need to uh find an introduction to uh, yeah. the it's not really involved but, yeah. <laughs> that's mostly i'm a project manager for work so that's that's primarily what i do day in and day out so okay yeah. Wonderful. That'll be great. Um, we'll talk more later, but I thought I'd I'd ask on that. Sure. We do have three previous minutes um, to vote on the February 27th, 2023, the March 27th, 2023, which had gotten um, skipped last year, and then our last meeting, the September 18th, 2023. Has everyone had a chance to look through them? Does somebody want to make a motion to approve all three minutes? Yes, I want to make a motion to approve all three minutes. I second. Any discussion? Other than a big thank you to Kayla. <laughs> all those in favor, say aye. 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 Very good. Any opposed or abstained? We've got the full committee here, which is fantastic. <laughs> treasurer's report, and it's it helps us to go through the treasurer's before, report before we do any applications because it all ties together. Um, so I'm going to share a screen. And I may make this just a little bit bigger which I can't see that line. So can you read that at all or is it too small? Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> so here's, this is really, a lot of this as is, is as of 1231. I haven't got, they haven't given me the January figures yet. So hopefully by our March 4th meeting, we'll be a little more updated. Um, here's our current figures. We have in the open space reserve, 30,500 historic. Um, there isn't any extra in that reserve. Housing reserve is 258,339. We try to keep 500,000 at least in the account. Um, undesignated fund, which could be used for any three of those categories, is 1,556,352. So there's a total of 2,345,191 available um, for projects. We also have reserved already approved 681,897 for a total CPA fund of a little over 3,027,000. <clears> and that 3 million actually helps the town's bond rating too. Um, it's doing some purpose just sitting there until it's it's spent things. Hopkins borrowing has used up the full 700, near 750,000 that um, was reserved and then it's into the borrowing 117,000. So that's coming right along the fields. Just a potential, we'll vote on this and talk about it more later, um, later hopefully tonight. 
Um, potentially 50,000 could be set aside in the, for the 2020 um, new year coming up, really 2025. Um, and then that would leave us a reserve, 80,500 open space, 50,000 historic, 308,000 housing. The totals stay the same. And the application we have from Porter Phelps is 150,000. 50,000 would come, if we did do these figures, 50,000 would come out of historic reserve and 100,000 out of undesignated. And we'd be back to um, 2,195 still available for future projects. Mm -hmm. We've collected so far for fiscal year 24. And please remember the, the CPA surcharge is only two out of four quarters. So we should be getting about another 160,000. The state distribution did drop down 53% um, of last year's figures here. We had been 94%, 100%, and then dropped to lower figures before that. We did very well. Most cities and towns got 21%. We're at 3% surcharge and we're a small town. I did look and there are about eight towns that got 100%, but they're all small towns and they all dollar-wise got less than we did. So Hadley did very well. Um, the state was down because there's been a lot less activity at the Registry of Deeds. People aren't refinancing and there's been less, um, there, I think housing sales were off like 28 or 30% or so. Um, so that affected the state match, and they did not put any extra money in. They put in $10 million and $20 million the last two years, and they did not do that. So right now we're at $337,000, and it's earned $60,000 in interest um, for $398,000, and we should be getting about another $160,000. So um, still coming with the February and May real estate tax payments. Our outstanding projects. We'll go over um, we'll go over that a little bit later on because that's not so pertinent to to what's just ahead. Any questions on this, Mark? Mary, you said it's two quarters out of four. Is it every six months that they <laughs> contribute? It's um the state does it just kind of in the fall, but it's when you pay your real estate tax bills. So it's what, February, May, August, and October. Um, so we've had the August and October payments in the 160,000, but the payments that are due February 1st and um, is it May 1st are still coming. Okay. And it's The fiscal year ends June 30th. So that's, um, that's why it's those dates. Um, I think you did a great job or the treasurer did a great job and you're explaining it well. Well, it's um, what I do is I get the figures from the town accountant um, and then put it in this format to help, help it be a little clearer. And hopefully Adam will be the one <laughs> doing that in the future. With, with, um, which will be don't, great. So. don't scare him off. He just joined. <laughs> um, I, I have a question. Yes. Um, do we know of the um, uh, the Hadley uh, tax surcharge, property tax surcharge portion, the one hundred sixty one? Do we do we know how much of that is um, going to pay off the Hopkins Fields borrowing? So, right now, zero. Um, okay. The Hopkins Fields ha will have to be borrowed in the fall because what it it's it's. Paid oh, okay. for out of somewhere right now until six June thirtieth, and I've talked with Linda um, Sanderson a few times, and she'll probably either through me or or Adam, um, or come directly to our meeting in August, um, in the you know August September to talk about it because we have some options. We can do a shorter borrowing, which is less fees, yeah, um, and pay it off quicker, um, or we could do a long term <clears throat> one, but. They, they had thought maybe the um, safety bill or the DPW building would be ready to be bonded and it's not as all at all. So we don't want to be a bond on our own because the fees are so much. Mm. So we could do a short term one um, and pay it off in a, you know, a few years. And I said, well, can we pay it off all at once? And I, I don't know the answer to that. So we'll, you know, she'll go over what the options are and we can 
give her our, you know, it's really our decision, but obviously she's the expert. So um, we'll work with her and, and figure out what makes the most sense. But at this point, um, <clears throat> it's this 117,000 hasn't affected this. Um, you could say that we're, you know, if we wanted to pay it off all at once or pay it off aggressively, we could reduce this by the 117,000. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? If I can only see a few hands, so um, if if I'm not calling on you, just please call my name. Well, also, I think if you use the raise hand option under reactions, then that will bring your window to the top of the gallery. Okay. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing for now, but- I, I think can... Andy had a question. Yeah. It is? Uh, I was just, Andy. Yeah, Andy. hi. Hello, everybody. Um, sorry, I've got two screens going on here. Anyway, I'm just curious if we should have, I mean, I saw that you have over to the right or down below some figures regarding the Hopkins Field budgets and um, when it's not reflected, uh, I think it was either to the right, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, yeah, whether or not I, that... I put here what's been spent. Let's thank you, Andy. What's been spent since the last our last meeting? Um, yeah, and, I, and I'm just wondering if uh, you know for the if we should have one of these uh, estimated bond numbers, what the payment might be, you know, reflected up there because it is a, a sizable project, and um, you know I don't want it to be uh, you know. Um, omitted from some of our future calculations. I know we don't have a hard number on it, but just something for the committee to you know, keep in mind that you know this is going to be three quarters of a million dollars. Yeah. For, uh, no, that's a good point. Hopkins borrowing and then and then Hopkins um, still to come, you know, could be. Plus interest. Plus interest. <clears throat> and, you know, if we were to do it, say, over five years, over five years, you know, we're also building up how much revenue is coming in. If we mm -hmm. want to pay it off all at once, then it really quickly impacts this number. Um, so we'll look in the, you know, we'll look at our, our fall meeting and see what, what options at that point seem you know, the best and hopefully interest rates will be a little lower than they are right now too. And, but, um, but she doesn't have to do anything with this until after 630, um, June 30th. Good. No, that's a good point. Anything else? Nope. All right. Um, so the set aside amounts, um, I do have that next. I guess I could have left that up a little longer, but um, we just we basically estimate how much we're going to be receiving in the CPA budget. I am going to share this again. Um, how much we are going to be receiving. So if you add the 160,000 to the, this figure here, you know, it's about 550, 60,000. Um, it's so hard to know what this, it's so hard to know what the earnings is going to be on the interest. And it's so hard to know what the state contribution is going to be. But um, so I, had, you know, threw out 50,000, but if people think it should be, we, we've been 50 for a few years now. Um, <clears throat> and this year, you know, we got 100% um, and we didn't have the negative interest. So it's, we could, you know, we could do 50, we could do 55. It's it's just, again, it's hard to know just what, I, I'd rather be a little bit conservative, but what do people think for um, set aside numbers? I think that's smart to have the larger undesignated because that way it can support any of those three 
Well, the, the bylaws and the state bylaws say we have to budget what we think we'll be getting, and then 10% has to be put into each of these. And then 70% goes will go into then the, un, the undesignated. And the reason is they don't want a, one town or city to be able to spend all their money on open space or all their money on historic or all their money on housing. They want to make sure that there's at least some set aside for each of those categories. Um, so they say 10% of what you think your budget's going to be um, for fiscal year really 25 is what we're we're going to be voting on. Um, which is, you know, July 1st, 24 to June 30th, 25. So we've often just based it on what the last year has been um, and maybe a little less because we don't know what the state or interest are going to do. Um, but even this, if we don't, if we ignore the interest earnings, um, you know, that brings us up to 500,000. And, but we certainly could even go a little higher, um, maybe 55,000. It's, it's it all gets used for CPA. It's not it's you know it's not like it won't be used. It's just they we, we do have to sort of estimate the ten percent. Yeah, so quick math on your numbers that are up there right now. The open space reserve is about one percent of our two hundred two million three hundred forty uh, five thousand, and the two fifty eight is eleven percent, and obviously zero for historic. Well, that that but it's not it's it's based on this these figures down here what we think our our total will be added to the cpa fund in 2025 sure. so it's not based on where we stand now um if we spend all of this we'd still be estimating 10 percent of our added revenue for the next year um so it's 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 these figures down here so um you know you can say if you ignore the interest level, because that does go up and down so much, in hindsight, we could have been 662,000 instead of 50 um, for last year, but who knew that state was gonna do, again, 94% because they put in that extra $20 million. And it was a, you know, it was a bigger year the year before for refinancing. Um, and the same with here. So here we were, you know, again, a little at our 50,000, we were a little low, but again, we didn't, you know, we were actually, if you take the interest in, we were right on target. Um, so, Mary, are you looking for a motion? We do need to do a do motion. This? Yeah. Okay. Well, if uh, this is a little weird, I'd like to make a motion unless somebody else has a comment. Well, we can, we discuss after the motion anyway. Oh, can we? Oh, very good. All right. Well, then I make a motion that we keep the set aside at $50,000 a piece. Second. Because it's, it's, it's really like uh, 50,000 or 33,000 if we want to do 10% of our estimate, but it doesn't make a difference. Well, this but, estimate doesn't include 160,000 we think right. we're still going to get. Right. Let's just do what we always do. Yeah. Any other discussion? We've got a, a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? All right. Thank you. Now I can stop sharing. All right. Next we have um, Porter Phelps Huntington application and we're very glad to have everybody here on board. Um, and it's great to have so many of you here for it. Um, Brian, I understand you're the one that's going to be presenting the application. Yep. Are, are you ready for, I won't need to share anything, so I'll go ahead and make you host. Sounds great. And I'll just say to the people I don't know here, that I'm Karen Sanchez Epler. I'm the president of the board of the foundation. Um, and we have a working committee that Brian is on and Alicia Betancourt is on. And um, Tom Harris is also here and on that committee. And Barbara Matthews and Alice Nash are here as members of the board. And then I think we also have some Porter Phelps Huntington fans um, Marla Miller, um, and 
I think I saw Claire. Yes, Claire Carlson's also here, and Ben Haley's on the um, on the farm committee and on the board. Um, so it's a lot of us coming out of excitement about this project and, and also bringing varied expertise to be able to answer questions. And now I'm going to pass things over to Brian. Awesome. Thanks, Karen. Mm -hmm. Can everyone see my screen okay? Yes. Yeah. Great. Wonderful. Um, yeah, so my name is Brian Whetstone. I've met most of you. Um, and I uh, did my PhD at UMass. And like um, Karen said, I'm a member of the Stabilization Committee for Phelps Farm and have been since the foundation um, acquired the property back in 2022. And uh, alongside Marla Miller, um, I was one of the um, co-project investigators that um, expanded the National Register of Historic Places uh, representation of the Porter Phelps Huntington House to include um, the surrounding Phelps Farm um, and over 100 acres of the surrounding landscape as well. And Alicia's here too, and I want to give her a chance to introduce herself. Hello, I'm Alicia Betancourt, and I'm the Historic Preservation Coordinator for PPH and also a committee member. Um, I became a lifelong enthusiast of Phelps Farm while studying and working at UMass Amherst. And in 2020, I completed a dual master's in architecture and historic preservation using Phelps Farm as a case study. So without further ado, take it away, Brian. Alicia. Um, so yeah, this presentation is basically trying to um, kind of uh, highlight the major, I guess, narrative beats of the application that we submitted to the committee. Um, so when it's all said and done, we'll have time, of course, for discussion and questions. And um, I'm glad Karen pointed out some of the other members of the committee, because depending on the question, they might be better suited to answer, especially around the building and construction side of things. So just to give you a sense of where um, we're going to go for the next like 10 minutes or so. I just want to briefly cover the history and significance of the site, the current site conditions and some of the work that the foundation has done to date, the uh, major highlights of the budget and our CPA request that we're bringing here, and then we can wrap up and um, have discussion and, and conversation and questions as, as we all see fit. Um, so to just kind of situate the site uh, very briefly, like I mentioned, uh, the Phelps Farm is now part of an expanded historic district in Hadley, 40 acres in its skirts, which the research and um, documentation phase for that began in 2021. And the historic district was recently listed by the Secretary of the Interior um, in May of 2023. And so you can see the um, kind of extensive um, site of Phelps Farm there on the right, that's aerial photography from 2021. So it's not quite as up-to-date as you'd maybe like, but the arrow is pointing at the house um, down there, the main farmhouse. As you can see, it's situated in a pretty complex um, working landscape. So there's uh, still active agricultural fields surrounding the house, as well as a caretaker's cottage and a pretty extensive outbuilding complex that are all north of the main house there. And as you can see from the map on the left, it's quite close to the foundation um, and the museum property, which is just across uh, Route 47 to the west. So part of that expanded historic district um, uh, entailed elaborating on the significance of um, both the Port of Phelps Huntington House, but really to develop some new research on what makes Phelps Farm so significant to the community of Hadley. And one of the um, probably most significant associations uh, that the house has is its links with um, figures like Asher Benjamin, who was a well-known uh, well and well-regarded um, architect working in the Connecticut River Valley in Boston, um, who published pattern books in the late 18th century and early 19th century that helped popularize federal style architecture. 
And Benjamin knew uh, Charles Porter Phelps, who first constructed Phelps Farm. They both worked together in Boston. We don't know if Benjamin directly designed this house, but certainly you can see his influence in its final design um, shown here. This is uh, the exterior cornice that runs around um, three sides of the main house. And you can see it's an exact match for a cornice from one of Benjamin's pattern books. So this is some really um, important material evidence that the house still has with this link to Asher Benjamin. Um, it's not, there, there aren't, there, we don't know much about Asher Benjamin himself. He didn't leave behind a archival collection for historians to access. And so this is, this is part of what could be an archival collection, right? Of some of the material um, stuff that he left behind here in the Connecticut River Valley. And there's details inside the house that match up with some Benjamin things as well. Um, the house is the house and surrounding farm were also leaders in the local and statewide dairy community here in Hadley. So the farm really is significant for the labor and agricultural history associated with its use as a farm and dairy operation. Um, it transitioned into a dairy operation in the late 19th century. It had been a farm since the house's construction in 1816, um, but turned to kind of the specialty agriculture at the end of the century. And it was a working dairy operation until the late 1970s. And then it's, the house is also really significant for its association with women's history. Part of starting the dairy in the 19th century was really attributed to the work of Ruth Huntington Sessions um, and then her... Um, daughter-in-law Donnie Hackett Sessions uh, carried on that work until uh, the dairy hold was, herd was sold in 1978. Donnie is also, um, as many of you probably already know, a really important uh, local figure in terms of documenting and preserving much of Hadley's history. Um, so it's, it's very fitting that, you know, her legacy is part of this house as well. So we know these stories and are able to share these stories in part because the house is still in such well-preserved condition, despite the kind of um, unsightly uh, uh, appearance on the outside. And as Karen was mentioning, the inside used to look a lot worse as well. But the rare and intact nature of its working and laboring spaces is especially significant in learning and sharing the history and significance of labor, women's history, and architecture here in Hadley in the wider Connecticut uh, Valley region. So when the Porter Phelps Huntington Foundation acquired Phelps Farm in 2022, it happened at this really crucial moment before the house had completely deteriorated beyond a point at which it could be salvaged or rehabilitated at all. Um, so the house has, of course, been vacant since 1988. Um, and since that time, the foundation has taken a pretty active role in trying to help save um, some of the objects that were there in the house, as well as um, getting some of the historical archival material out of the home and into um, the Porter Phelps Huntington family papers that are now housed at UMass. But as you can see here from um, the stabilization plan that the committee solicited um, earlier last year, um, despite the condition, the house really is this really rare, intact um, example of this early New England um, domestic architecture. So after the um, foundation acquired the property in 2022, there's been a lot of work already undertaken at the site, um, especially in terms of this um, uh, important planning and stabilization steps necessary to begin a much more comprehensive um, rehabilitation process for the building. So the quote from the stabilization plan I had on the previous slide was from Messick, Cohen, Wilson, and Baker. Um, who we contracted with to prepare an initial stabilization plan for the foundation. And that plan helped outline a number of really significant projects that are needed to stabilize the structure. And they, you know, ranked them in order of importance for us as well. So this is from that particular plan. You can see it's of the main house looking um, south at that uh, main southern elevation. Um, so the green boxes are some of the work that we've done to date. We've cleared the house completely of the uh, junk and debris that was inside most of the rooms, which made it a lot um, which made it a lot easier to get folks to come in and, and take a look at things. We've um, tried to uh, it promote better ventilation around the house, uh, especially by clearing some of the large um, brush and trees. And um, the 
roof currently on the house is of course failing. That's one of the the bigger um, projects. It's currently covered in um, a non-historic uh, asphalt shingle that was probably installed um, in the mid to late 20th century is probably our guess, best guess, probably sometime before 1988. And the roof that we intend to install um, as outlined here in the stabilization plan is a long-term temporary roof that will allow us to get something over the structure as we um, continue to move forward in the rehabilitation process. So some of the other work we have done here is um, we've disassembled and documented the chimneys uh, of the main house down below the roof line. And all of those um, bricks have been kept for future use um, in the property. And um, we also had uh, someone come in and um, do a Matterport scan of the entire interior of the house, which I'm going to attempt to share in the chat. Um, and that uh, that was not just like, it's not just cool that we can like scan the house and see the inside. It, it's definitely very cool, but it also um, helps us um, do some uh, planning and documentation of, of the structure. So we now can get accurate square footage on the interior. Uh, we can develop measured drawings of uh, wall elevations, which will be really crucial as we begin um, to move inside the house. Um, and it helps, uh, you know, give a sense of where there might be gaps in the walls and how and the exact footprint of the chimneys and things like that. So it was another kind of crucial um, initial step here in the early planning phase. But of course, probably the biggest and most exciting project, which if, if you've driven by the house, you've hopefully seen, is the completion of a temporary structure to cover the collapsing and really compromised portion of the working L. Um, and that happened just in December, early early January. That just happened in early January to uh, try and prohibit the entry of any additional rain or snow and allow the structure to dry out. So the foundation has done a lot of work on the structure to date. Um, and with all these completed projects in mind, um, as you can still see from the photos, right, there's still a long road ahead for Phelps Farm. And um, obviously additional sources of funding are really needed to continue working towards the completion of our first phase of stabilization as outlined by the um, stabilization report. Um, so the entire, uh, the remainder of the first phase of stabilization uh, we estimate at costing about another two hundred and fifty thousand. Um, the foundation has already spent around one hundred and six thousand dollars on some of the work that I just outlined previously. Uh, we are coming to the CPA only asking for one hundred and fifty thousand, um, and we intend to apply that money for the costs that are ranked here on our um, budget sheet as the most significant and critical. So that 150,000 will go immediately towards uh, the roof stabilization. There's some structural reinforcement that needs to happen in the basement. And then another really important um, uh, line item is uh, abatement of mold inside the house. And that has to happen so that work crews can come inside and so that it's um, safe and habitable for um, people to come in and begin some of the interior work. And part of that will include um, the installation of the dehumidifier to help uh, continue drying the structure out and kind of stabilizing uh, the humidity level inside the house so that there is not as much um, fluctuation over the seasons while we don't have, um, you know, a, a proper heating and cooling system inside the house. So our intention is to have the property adequately secured for visitors in time for the celebration of the museum's uh, 75th anniversary celebrations in the fall of 2024. And Alicia's position as historic preservation coordinator is covered by a staffing grant from Mass Humanities. And that position is projected through fall of 2025. So it's really our intention to have the uh, this kind of first phase all wrapped up. Um, and completed by the time Alicia's position is done and, and her work has concluded with the, with the foundation. So obviously it will be a, a long while before the site can support full public use, but once the building is stabilized and this first phase of stabilization is completed, 
uh, the foundation intends to treat the ensuing rehabilitation process as a really important and powerful programming initiative to invite the Hadley community in to the preservation and stabilization process. So we intend to design um, a, both appropriate as well as highly structured ways um, and safe ways to enable community observation or limited participation in some of the uh, preservation and rehabilitation work that um, is yet to come. So many of you may have noticed the work um, Historic Northampton did this past winter to invite community members to help move and rehabilitate a historic barn on their property. And that, that we think really reflects the kind of ethos that we want to share with members of Hadley's community to make this space significant and meaningful to everyone here in town. So to that end, the foundation's really looking forward to fostering relationships that help permit the site's use as a training ground where preservation prof professionals can um, exercise some of their skills on site. Um, and in these ways, the process of rehabilitating Phelps Farm can really help strengthen community commitment to an understanding of the, the value of preservation in a town like Hadley. So the farmhouse then will become a really important keystone in that process. Um, and in terms of the um, foundation itself, um, it will enable the Porter Phelps Huntington Foundation to also offer more expansive and more encompassing public programming um, because right now the, the foundation um, doesn't have sufficient office and, and collection storage space or exhibition space or public programming space. So part of the um, you know way down the line future intended use of Phelps Farm is to be a kind of community, um, a, a space for programming that can um, be used for a, a public purpose is, is really the intent here once, um, you know, the paint has dried and all the final details have been taken care of. So that more or less covers the, um, the bulk of the request. And I think now we can maybe turn it over to questions and discussion. Mary, I think you're muted. I thought it was very exciting. I really enjoyed going through the, what is it, Matterport and seeing some of the intact details. There's even some, uh, well, I don't know how original the wall coverings are, but the uh, the fireplaces and the moldings and that, uh, what did you call it, a, 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 um, like an L pantry? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the Matterport is a little bit addictive if you have not gotten in there yet. <laughs> yeah. Good warning. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah, it's appropriate at this time to make a motion um, for the. I would. I would make a motion to support the request. I second that motion as a former uh, perfect spot of tea server at the Port of Phelps Huntington House. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yep. All right. Um, now we're well, now let's discussion. do our discussion. <laughs> Andy um, Morris Friedman and I did walk through the house when we, our committee was invited in the mm -hmm. fall, and, and it was really beautiful to see it. There's a lot of details. It's not a typical farmhouse. <laughs> yeah, I love the, uh, the history of the, you know, the architectural history of it. And then I was also encouraged by going to the <clears throat> PPH website and reading it, it says uh, uh, it says the museum recognizes our responsibility to acknowledge the peoples of these lands as well as the histories of dispossession alongside enslavement that generated the wealth reflected in this historic house and museum using collections interpretations programming and through collaborative relationships we seek to examine address and reflect these difficult histories so I, I like that you would use this for education and i yield the floor well and i can just say that one of the first things that was rescued out of that building were a set of um charles Delsips's financial records um, that showed his 
um, trade before moving to Hadley um, in this, you know, in the 1790s um, in plantation products. And so, you know, the, the history of that house is also part of the kinds of history that um, we're reflecting on there in, in that statement. And, and um, the work that Marla and, and Brian did in, in the nomination is really work about thinking about how you can tell a really wide, inclusive, diverse history of Hadley um, out of the materials in, in these historic sites, this historic site. And Claire's hand is up. Hi, um, I'm Claire. I live at 133 Mount Warner Road. I'm a Hadley resident, and I also work at a historic sites up in Deerfield. As a member of the town, I think it's important that I think I feel like all of us on this call might be very like minded. So we have to be mindful that if this makes it to the floor of town meeting, that we need to be prepared to speak in favor of why we want to spend this money to help save this place. Um, cause there will be some questioning about how could you spend town money on something private? And I'll be happy to stand up and say something positive, but I think and you, many of you have been to town meeting before. So just, we need to be prepared to make our case. I mean, I think it's helpful that the Porter Phelps Huntington house is already an established respected museum in town and also open to the public. And also many people in town have come to events there and talks there and concerts there and tea there. And I think that, that that's a big help because there's faith in PPH that this will be also well handled and, and open to the public at various stages um, through the years. Um, but you're right, we need to. <clears throat> it's So it's it's different. Than, than some of the other private ones and that the public is invited into it. But it is a private organization. Um, <clears throat> other comments from the, the, the Community Preservation Committee? I, I meant to ask um, how long PPH has been in existence, the, uh, the foundation? Um, the the museum um, was sort of created as a museum in 1949, and it became a 501c3 in 1955. And it got um, the original PPH building's um, entry in the National Register was from 1973. Thank you. And the Quick question. And the property that we're talking about right now, this is going to be an extension of the Porter Phelps so undertaking. It how, was, do, how does this work? It was donated um, without funds to support it. So it was donated as land and a sure. falling down building um, sure. buildings to the foundation, really in the hope that the foundation could preserve it. Um, okay. Right. So, so we've had it, it was donated in 2022. So it's, we've is had it the, a year and a half, I guess. Is that the entire parcel that was donated? Yes. Yes. I, uh, I'd say that, I'm, you know, having driven by it for a couple of decades, and I've always been intrigued by that place and that property. And uh, um, I'm good to see that there's a historic effort going into uh, saving that building. Um, and I also like the concept that maybe it was just uh, alluded to that it could be some kind of incubator for people looking at historic preservation, maybe coming up through UMass or any of the other schools nearby to, um, you know, in one, from a financial side, you might get some, uh, you know, educated, but uh, some labor at uh, low cost labor to help uh, advance the project, which uh, everybody would be interested in, in seeing. Um, I'm also curious, though, as, as with the um, my my background, a little bit about the uh, you talk about the foundation. I'm also thinking about the building foundation because usually we see some of these older projects, and you know, often oftentimes they had 
field stone. And from what one picture that I saw there, it looked like there was some vertical granite slabs protecting that. Uh, and you're going to be doing some support in the basement. Of course, it's in the floodplain. So I'm um, kind of curious as to when, you know, when we start working in the house or start from the bottom up, uh, if there, what the, what the state of that foundation was. I didn't see it as a line item requiring much work other than look like peer support. Yeah, Can you elaborate that, a little bit on that. Yeah, and some folks might be better suited to jump in than me, but um, yeah, the 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 actual like stone and I think parts of it are brick foundation as well, but it is faced in that kind of granite um, slab. To my knowledge, right, Karen, I think the foundation is actually in pretty stable shape. It's a couple structural members that are in in the basement itself. So the house has been um, added onto twice since its construction in 1816. And some of the structural members around that addition are what's been compromised. And I think they have some, is it dry rot that's that's down there on, on one of the beams? Um, and in the, at, at the turn of the century, there was a, one of those giant like octopus furnace systems that was put in and that added a ton of weight on the uh, main floor to, to the to the main floor of the house. And so I, I think over time, it's just um, combined with the, the dry rot and being empty for several decades has uh, made it necessary that there needs to be some reinforcement done in there. The uh, perimeter so, foundation um, has been evaluated. It's in good shape. Yeah, so Bob, um, Bob Leed, who's a structural engineer, came and looked at the um, building as part of the stabilization plan. And he um, recommended the um, the replacing of some of those beams and posts, but not of the foundation as a whole. He thought the foundation as a whole was was um, secure. I kind of want the actual construction people, not the me English professor. Um, <laughs> I mean, everything is to be determined, honestly, but the main structural stabilization will be carpentry work. Um, this foundation seems solid for now, but they did recommend some grading away from the house. Um, it was originally kind of a graded away from the house for flooding, and that would need to be redone. So that would tie into the consideration of the foundation. Okay, thank you. Um, Denise, you need to unmute. Yes, hi, thank you. Um, so this project is just for the stabilization and I see that you are planning on waiting to do a preservation restriction until after the completion of this portion of the, the project, the stabilization. Um, what is the threshold and like, is there another project after that before you apply for a preservation restriction or once you're stabilized is that when you're going to do it yeah what's the timeline for that yeah I, I we're planning to apply for funding to do a historic structures report this spring um so if we get that it will um it will put on historic preservations and also let us know how to move forward um mm -hmm. But I think we do feel confident that if we can shore up the basement and cover the roof, that it will have enough stability to feel like we can responsibly um, put on a historic preservation. But it would be nice to do it together with something like a historic structures report because then they would pay for it. So. Smart. Um, Brian, you mentioned during your Excellent presentation. I believe you said something about bricks being removed and and categorized for reinstallation at a later date. Could you uh, remind me or clarify where those those were foundation bricks or they, that that was, was at the L or it was the there there were two chimneys on the oh, chimneys two and a half story part of the house. <laughs> One was on the south slope of the roof and one was on the north slope of the roof. Um, and so those were 
documented and then disassembled down to below the roof line to prepare for a, a, a new um, to, line to go on the roof. To put the protective roof over, right. Mm -hmm. And that was, um, may, maybe I'll get people mixed up. That was either a Bob Lee recommendation or it was a Messick Cohen Baker Wilson recommendation, but it was directed to us by experts that that's what we needed to do to begin right. that process. Which makes sense to allow the long-term temporary protective roof. Right. And are you, I don't remember, did, are you already at the point where you feel you have the envelope tightened up or that's the next, you know, all of the window openings and anything else, any leaky uh, soffits or anything? That might be a uh, malicious question. Yeah. I think of the uh, the building is pretty much mothballed at this point to keep it secure from both people and critters. Mm -hmm. um, all the windows have been accounted for, and what is broken has been stored for later restoration. Um, so the building and the L portion are mothballed. So mm -hmm. um, the real big thing in the summertime would be a dehumidifier. Mm -hmm. That is the main concern of our moisture. It's not so much an issue in the winter, but it is secure. Thank you. I have some questions, but I'll, Andy, go ahead. <clears throat> Morris Friedman. Um, hi, thank you for uh, applying and for a great presentation. Um, just some questions that I think might be helpful for you to ponder before town meeting. Um, how does preserving this uh, building and farm benefit the people of Hadley? Does it help preserve the history of people's ancestors who worked at the farm? Or is it a history of how farming has changed over time? Um, what's uh, what's in it for us? So um, I'm I can practice with you now, and then we can um, you can all help make us better at this answering these questions by by town meeting. But I think there's a whole slew of things. So by uniting these two sites, we really have a history of farming in Hadley and um, family usage in Hadley that goes from the 1750s um, until the 1970s, which is extraordinary. Um, and a lot of the work that, that Marla and Brian did on the nomination really start to outline that history in ways that will make it possible for the museum to do that kind of interpretive work. And Part the papers that were rescued from Phelps Farm are extremely detailed labor history documentation of all the people who work there. Um, maybe more than one should actually be able to know about them. Um, and a lot of those people are families that are still um, in Hadley. So I think it will have a very, you know, sort of immediate sense um, in that way to be able to tell those stories. I think, too, we think about climate change, being able to tell agricultural history and land use history changes um, just feels like a really sort of potent work for, for a local history museum to do. Um, And then I also do want to stress, I guess, two things. That is, the Porter Phelps Huntington Museums had a, always had an educational history part of the work it does, and it's also had a community joy part of the work it does with concerts and things like that. And this building has some really lovely large indoor spaces in a way that the museum building doesn't, and that will make it possible to have kinds of events, um, not just in the summer, um, over time. And then to also just really stress what Brian was saying in his presentation, that we really want 
to find ways to do the restoration part of this work once the building's not moldy and it feels like safe to let people go into it. Um, we want to be able to do that work in a way that can help people in Hadley have fun learning about historic preservation and maybe getting to send a banister or, you know, like be part of the rehabilitation of this building. And I think that that will help people recognize how wonderful it is to live in a town with this long history and these historic structures and to value Hadley in a different way. That sounds very good. Do you think you can get the names of some of those families that worked at the farm, some old time Hadley families and say the so-and-sos and the this is and the that, you know, with their uh, descendants sitting at town meeting and voting on this? I think that would be. Sure. <laughs> we know what box that's in more or less. <laughs> um, another question, if I can just keep going. Um, people, I think, are going to ask about the metal roof. Um, and I spoke to Tom a little bit about this, um, that uh, 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 two things I would stress is that for a building, uh, metal roofs, they last for like 40 years, right? Mm -hmm. So for a building built in 1816, a 40-year roof is a temporary roof. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and that the metal roof enables you to do work on the attic and the building while protecting it, as right. opposed to getting a cheap, I don't know, 20 year roof or whatever. Um, I mean, but people are definitely going to ask about that. Yeah. So no, I, things you just said we're thinking. And also, so this building was donated to us and we're really glad but it was not donated to, to us with an endowment it was not donated to us with any money and it wasn't like we were this really rich institution with big pockets just waiting to spend them on this building so we really have to do the work to raise the funds we need to rehabilitate this building and i can't promise you it's not going to take us all of that 40 years of the metal roof i mean i you know it would be awesome if somebody wants to donate if few million dollars to let us do it faster, but I can't feel confident of that. And so putting on a roof that will really let us do all of this work and will give us the time to do it historically responsibly right, um, that 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 feels and and as and as you say, and as um, the architect said when they were recommending this is the best option as a way that would let people work on the attic afterwards. Um, my, my, the, the other co my comment on the roof is, I don't think $40,000 is gonna be enough. I don't know where you got that estimate, but we got a metal roof on our house before COVID inflation and it was 26,000. So are you sure that's gonna be enough? Well, that's not calculating what actually has to be repaired in the attic to support a new roof yet. We need um, a little bit more input on that. But we had a few quotes done around that number for a traditional metal roof. So it's very subject to interpretation. And we're not quite sure how much reparative carpentry is going to need to be done once we take the existing roof off. So that number can definitely fluctuate. It's definitely better to ask for too much. Yeah. And, and that's why we have such a big contingency because we're not quite yeah. sure what, what it's going to look like when we start taking right. things apart. So also uh, at town meeting, definitely restate your commitment to give the money back. If you don't uh, need the contingency money. Right. It's not like you can spend it on something else. You know what I mean? Some people right, think but oh, we, you, so, once you get the CPA money, you can do whatever you want with it. And that's really not the case. Right. But so we gave you a project that we, including the contingency, are pricing the remaining of what we think we need to do to stabilize the building at 250 And then we're hoping that we can, you know, we've also applied for grants 
to yep. do this and we will keep applying <laughs> for things to do this. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. So. I, I think uh, finally what I would stress, uh, not only in front of us, but a town meeting, is that this is the first of several requests that you're going to be making um, for this long-term project. Um, and it's not... Uh, it's not a one and done kind of kind of deal. Um, just so everybody knows what we're getting. That was one and, of my questions. <laughs> yeah. And 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 what I would like is for you to, you know, have maybe it's too soon to have a long range plan because you got to open the box first to see what's inside of it. But um, you know, this is the thirty year goal. This is what it's going to be like. You know. 40 years from now, here's the plan, here are the paths, here's the, the you know, performance area, here's the this, here's the, you know, all, the, all that kind of stuff. It kind of helps people support it, you know, if they see the vision. Um, so uh, I really support this project, you know, I help the applicants uh, put their um, application together. Um, uh, it, this is what CPA was made for. Because otherwise, there's no money to do stuff like this, and the history is just lost. Mm -hmm. So, uh, thank you for applying, and um, uh, that's it for me. Um, Barbara, let me say a few things first, okay? Just we'll get through our committee members and then be so welcome for other comments. <clears throat> um, I do want to point out that, <clears throat> excuse me, that. Um, when funds are approved at town meeting, they're really funds as of the next fiscal year. So the funds aren't really available until July 1st. I noticed you had doing the roof like in March. And I just want to make that clear that um, the town won't, you know, the work is to be done after it's approved and the new year starts. So um, just please keep that in mind for your, your scheduling. Um, I think I understand the... <clears throat> your um, project budget and and um, it, it all sounds very good. And it does make sense that this might be, there, there'll be some other needs in the future. Um, I did get a response from um, Stuart Saginaw that I wanted to, he's at the state coalition. I had sent him your applications and they, um, they're a coalition that trustees of reservation is part of and a whole bunch of other state instead of everybody kind of doing their own CPA people they've sort of all pulled together and and um so we're very lucky well we pay dues but we're very lucky to have their expertise on the CPA and um he said that um he suggested that we get an independent historic preservation consultant to review the plan now I feel you you've kind of done a historic preservation consultant to review the plan. Um, and he he wasn't quite sure about putting a temporary roof on as a metal roof, which, you know, is a little hard to <laughs> hard to swallow in some ways. Um, but I understand that if you were to, you, it would take time to figure out which type of roof you even want, and then a whole lot more money to do that than the metal roof would be. Um, but, um, and then you know, he suggests, you know, it's doing that versus starting right away with the appropriate roof so that you don't have that extra expense. Um, and a few other things, it's, you know, how will you protect the public's investment in this property, private property? And you normally would ask for a preservation restriction, but from what I've understood, that's the next step. And if you wait till the next step, it's paid for in the grant you're looking for. Right. So that, you know, that seems to make sense as long as you really feel that with this work, you can go forward. Um, and then what will the 150000 be spent on? Um, and, it, you know, it's, I don't know if you can designate exactly which of the tasks on the budget will be paid for with $150,000. Um, I think 
most of it seems pretty appropriate, except for maybe the tree and site work, if that's away from the building. Um, but that's a small part of the total figure. Mary, um, could you put could you put the budget back up? Yes. Um, I actually, Brian, would you like to put the budget back up? I think Trump I need farm you. capital I project. You, can you make me a host again? I can. Oh, did I take that away? I, I took it away from myself. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Go back. I mean, this is maybe a question for all of you, since we're not asking you for the um, whole amount. If, for instance, Mass Cultural Council gives us money before um, July, when any money would be available for you from you. Would there be a problem for us saying, all right, we're going to use that money right now on the roof and we'll use your money on something that's marked as moderate rather than critical or significant rather than critical because you see what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's like we're mm -hmm. giving you a bigger budget than... We're giving you a small, uh, you know, one hundred and fifty uh, for two hundred and fifty thousand dollar budget, and we're going to keep looking for money from as many other places as we can think of. Um, and obviously, it would be better to to start things as soon as any funding shows up. Does that feel problematic to you in terms of like to say you're giving one hundred and fifty towards this whole stabilization goal? rather than our money is the roof money or the dehumidifier money or, you know? I think a lot of it, so a big part of the difference is 60,000 is contingency and cost. So right. as long as those contingency and costs are part of what you've shown us here, because you're not sure, right. like Alicia said, the reparative carpentry work may be twice right. that because you get into a whole lot more than you expected. Right. I mean, I, I think as long as it's part of things that fall under um, this list, this, this list, but I'll, yeah, so because we need, we do need to know what we're voting on. Mm -hmm. um, but I, it also in a practical sense is if you can start in on some of this stuff and somebody else is paying for it, that's great. Um, right. <clears throat> right. So I think as long as that contingency is, is backing is you're basically saying, you know, we're not sure until we get into it, if we'll need more money. If you end up only spending, you know, 200,000 and you got 60,000 from, you know, another grant, you know, then we'd say, well, we'd like, you know, the difference back. Um, right, right. I, I, I don't have a problem. I don't know how other people feel. Um, the, the, the other thing I would, done? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I, go ahead. No, I'll, I'll be brief, Andy. I was just gonna say that when I total up their color-coded priorities, I get $180,000. The top, which is all critical or significant, that's $113,000. Uh, mm -hmm. In the next section, there's seven, so you're at $120,000. Um, you know, I think if, if they said that they were going to focus on the priorities with our $150,000, then I'm completely comfortable. And that would even, you know, like you could put everything in there except the minor which is tree and site and you could split the window mm -hmm. um, restoration and there's your 150 you know and then i don't i don't see that anyone should complain that we're paying for a contingency okay good what i would uh, what i would add to that is um the the issue is that the applicant spends the money on something that is not um, approved for cpa um, so for example, you get somebody else to pay for the roof replacement. And so you use that $40,000 from CPA to build the parking lot when you can't use CPA money to build parking lots. Okay. So that's the issue. So right, I think, but if, we, but if we were to use it for say the shutters, which are here on low, 
Yeah, right. the well, funds well, aren't going to be used for anything that's not on that list. Okay. I can't guarantee that list is two hundred and fifty thousand either. That's a very small contingency in the scheme of re rehabilitation right. work. I, so, I understand. I understand. Yeah. Um, I think uh, just to build on what Mary said, that if that does happen, um, that you let us know. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know that you write the chair. And you say, uh, you know, well, how the circumstances have changed and how you want to, you know, use the funds for something, something different. And I think that would be fine. Yeah, and we're perfectly comfortable giving you project updates and whatever you need. I mean, obviously, we're heavily documenting everything we take apart and do. So, yeah. All right, But you could say, you know, somebody says... Uh, Oh, I'm going to use the money for X and then they use the money for Y and X yeah. is acceptable and Y is not. Yeah. Um, so that's just why we like to be, uh, we like to be specific. Right. Understand. I guess what I want to say is I don't imagine us having so much money coming in from anything that we would not use it for the things on this list. It's just, if money came in before you did we might want to start with the things that are critical yeah with somebody else's money yeah well we're planning for the best case scenario right so let's let's hope it happens exactly so one other thing that Stuart had mentioned um his last point was you know does porter phelps have enough money to begin with or are they just asking the town when they have the money but it sounds like you answered that already that <laughs> the money is not there so um just a um, Mary, I have one, one, one more quick question. Oh, who has that? Andy. Andy K. Andy, Andy K. K. Um, so I know it certainly Andy Morris Friedman mentioned it earlier that there might be, um, you know, that you're going to indicate that you'll be coming back. And, you know, with other projects that are looking for partial funding, we have tried to uh, somehow ascertain the entire scope what you're looking at for um, you know total rehab to get to where you are and uh, granted that's based on this year's money versus uh, um, 10 or 20 or 40 years down the road but i think that if you have the uh, uh, resources available to come up with a uh, you know a, a, an engineer's uh, estimate of where you would be to achieve your goal that might be because um, yeah, you might get asked the question on town meeting floor. So if we're in for this, what is what is the, you know, what are we looking at total contribution? What are you looking at for fundraising? And if you're looking at, well, it's a two and a half million dollars to get to where we want to be, you know, that that might have a, a different spin with the audience and saying, well, we're, we're really we're looking at a six hundred thousand dollar goal. So, you know, that kind of the uh, red thermometer on the side of the project. Uh, with the 150, where where do you think that would get us to the estimated total? Uh, just a question you might want to be. Okay. Um, there and you know I realize I know we have a, a motion in a second, and I I actually was premature asking for that um, because this was really a presentation, and then at our next meeting we do the voting. So if if it's okay with the people that made the first and second, we'll. We'll table that until until our next meeting. I, I jumped the gun. Um, I I do know that because this is not a town-owned building, we've done grant agreements with the town um, for you know the funds if they're approved at town meeting. And um, it's really because we meet twice. We we meet before each town meeting and not very regularly. We it's really the grant agreement is with the select board. And, and there is a provision in there every six months to give an update. Um, so that's part of it. And, you know, with the last one we did, we had two provisions. One was, you know, the, the preservation restriction, which um, I feel comfortable waiting on in this case, especially if you're going to ask for more money, then that would be, if it isn't in place, then might be the appropriate time. Um, but also um, we, we had in the last one, you know, provision if the house was actually sold within X amount of time, the money would be returned with the idea that 
you know, the, the value increased in the house because of the work that was done and, and it was town funds and it, it, the intention is not to have it go to, you know, be sold. And, and, and it sounds like, um, you know, that's something we, we would look at. Um, and it might be like, if it's sold within 10 years and, you know, I, I know that's not in your plans at all, but I'm just saying that that might, hopefully that wouldn't be an objection that, that you guys would have. Mm -hmm. But it's a way to protect the town so that it's not just being used to increase the value for uh, somebody that's not town. That's not town. Um, <clears throat> other than that, the, the provisions are pretty, um, I think, pretty easy to live with. Um, <clears throat> and the work is, you know, we don't, town doesn't pay deposits. They pay for as the, you know, it, it can be as the work is done, if it's a substantial amount of the, the work and then as, you know, it needs to be, that portion needs to be finished before. So it wouldn't have to be the whole project. It could be when, you know, the roof replacement was done or the basement ceiling was done, that portion could be paid. So, um, and- yeah, I, One of you told me that. Yeah. Or told yeah. Susan that, yeah. Um, all right, comments from, I see Susan with, well, first, is there any other um, PCP members that would like to say something? I just want to sum up that I was impressed with the realism of the study that they are saying, we don't have the money in hand. We don't know how long it's going to take. We're in it for the long haul. And this might take 30, 40 years. So I'm, I, I don't question the metal roof. I say that's a very smart move to protect the space so you don't lose the work you're already putting into it. Um, and I thought that all of the, uh, you know, it looks like you guys have really uh, put a lot of thought into this. And so I commend you. Andy Morris Friedman. Yeah, I want to make a plug for preserving the upstairs bathroom with those incredible fixtures. <laughs> and uh, let's not, well, <laughs> let's not pretend that time stopped in 1918 um, but that the history of changes in the house, parallel history of changes in Hadley and in our culture, and um, those fixtures are so beautiful. Um, if you do get rid of them, I want them. <laughs> this, this is why the Historic Structures Report is so important, because the period of significance runs until 1978. There's, there's so much that's there, right? right. Like... From 1816 to 1978, that's a huge chunk of time. To and it's so, so there's this 1822 pantry with it's still all its wooden shelves and everything. And then there's this little 1950 something um, kitchenette. Too. Like, right. With yeah. the instructions still in the oven. Yeah. Incredible. That's Donnie. Incredible. They kept everything. Yeah, I would uh, I would uh, recommend, if possible, that people in our committee actually go see the house. If you do another public event, mm -hmm. you should definitely go check it out. Yeah. And the virtual is fine, I'm sure, um, but there's nothing like actually being there. Yeah, but you should go. Everybody before they leave, this thing should go into the chat. I guess you also have it in the reports, and just grab the Matterport, and then yeah. that will take away the rest of your week. I promise. So I know Tom and, and Barbara Matthews and Susan Lisk have all raised their hand. So um, Tom, I saw you, would you like to start? I, I'm sorry, I, I'm having a hard time hearing that the audio quality seems to be changing continuously. But uh, um, what I wanted to say is that the, the discussion of the metal roof seems to uh, be based on the apprehension that a metal roof is a luxury roof, which it often is if it's a standing sea metal roof. Uh, and I wanted to point out that my understanding is the metal roof that's proposed here is the equivalent of a barn roof. It's an agricultural quality roof of, uh, that is screwed down rather than, than clipped down. It's not meant to be permanent, although they are the roofs that assure the preservation of barns here for many, many years. They're very effective. They're not uh, an extraordinarily expensive uh, uh, architectural application. They're really a, a functional 
rough. Thank you. Um, Barbara? Yeah, I just wanted to um, follow up and, and just say that this is a very rare survival. It's extremely intact, both exterior, but the interior finish work is there, but it also is a little time capsule at the same time. And I wouldn't want us to think that, oh, you know, there's lots of old houses. There are very few houses that have this degree of um, integrity left in them, dating from the time of its construction, but also going forward. And that includes the technologies of kitchens and the spaces that make a house function. You know, uh, we're past the colonial revival period when all people care about was the, the nice furniture in the front. People want to know about who's in the house, who's working in the house, who lived in the house. And this is a form of historical evidence right here. And as people are saying, it takes us right up into the 70s. So sometimes neglect is a friend of preservation in the sense that no one, quote, fixed up this house at a critical moment. But now it's, I think it really is, um, our charge is to save the house. Nice, thank Please. you. Susan, we're, is Susan Liss still here? Or she may have, oh, she's uh, still here. Susan, yeah. would you like to join us? Or maybe she had to step away. Nope. Oh, there she is, hi, Susan. You're muted. I know, hello. <laughs> <laughs> No, I just want to thank the committee for hearing the um, presentation and all this really wonderful um, information you're giving us going forward. Um, so I don't really have any other, I have many questions, but I may follow up with you um, on another morning. <laughs> yeah, no, that's your questions have been enormously helpful to us. Looking forward to March and May. I agree with Andy. I think this is a great use of CPA funds. And um, it's exciting that, like I had said before, the, you know, the PPH is such a respected organization in town. And, and I think um, it'll be nice to have this additional space and, and event space too um, for gathering. So what we're going to do next is um, if, you know, if people have any, if the committee has any other questions to follow up on, but we'll mull it over a little bit and, and um, we'll be back on March 4th and you're all welcome, but at least somebody from your group can be here. <laughs> yeah. um, then we'll, that's when we'll actually be voting on it. Um, if it. If it's approved by us, then it does go on warrant for um, town meeting and um, it does, you know, it, it also gets voted on by the Finance Committee and the Select Board. Whether or not they approve it or not, it still is on a warrant. It just shows their, their support. Um, you got nice letters from the Historical Commission and the Historical Society, um, to, which was very well thought out and, and written. And um, I think that's nice to have for town meeting as well. Um, <clears throat> And it is it is your um, job or to present it at town meeting as well. Just a reminder, you need to be a town resident to speak at town meeting. So you can think about who would be presenting it um, with, with that stipulation as well. Um, and that's, that's kind of the process ahead. Town meeting is usually like the first Thursday in May, though it can vary. So, um, and it is in person. Um, so anything else at this point before we let these people come? We're so grateful for you all participating and, and for your expertise with this. So Mary, there's not a structure that lets us have, for instance, wonderful Brian as a presenter for oh, this. Oh, there, is, person. The, 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 there, there is. Natalie, resident. There is. You can, if you, uh, we don't need a detailed discussion Right. right now about how the town meeting process works. If you have any questions, just give me a call okay. and we'll go, I'll go over the procedures and the strategies and things you should do and landmines to avoid and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. It's, so, you know, it comes after March. Anyway, you guys get to vote first. So. Yeah, and yeah. I'm, I'm confused on that point because in the past, it seems like we got to vote to allow somebody to speak, but it seems lately they've been saying you need to be a town resident. So Andy, may have more, um, and we can get some more clarification from the moderator. Um, Otherwise, I'm looking at Marla. Yeah. 
right? <laughs> right. The main thing to say right now is that generally our committee does not um, present uh, the um, the projects. You know, the the applicant does that, and we're there to talk about procedural questions. Um, but generally, you and your supporters make the case. Very good. Well, thank you all for joining us. And um, if you're on the CPC committee, please don't leave yet. <laughs> well, we can go ahead and start. Um, and we'll get, there we go. Hi, Denise. Um, so I'm gonna, the next item is any projects about to expire. And actually, let me pull this up again. Um, let me share the screen. So for our outstanding projects right now, um, <clears throat> we've got the town hall pillars, which are well underway. Um, the Goodwin repairs and the Goodwin study are coming up. And then we have the first congregational church clock repair for 13.5, and also the first church steeple repair for a balance of 95,750. The Hockenham fence is kind of stalled. Um, there's a couple ones with that. Unfortunately, it's been some disputes over the work that was done, and, and um, so the town administrative office is handling going forward in the DPW. The Golden Court windows are done, and the bill has been presented, if not already paid. So that'll be dropping off. Um, the Hopkins playing fields are well underway. The cemetery is more money for that fence. Um, the samplers are at the conservators, and they hope to be done by the fall. The Lake Warner study is wrapping up, and they're going to actually be looking for some more funds in the future. Um, as they follow through on what the study recommends. The historical signs are in various stages, but some are very close to being ready to go. Um, <clears throat> signs are waiting for permits. The walking tour is just waiting for a few permissions. And the Russell School study um, hasn't been done yet, but it has was put out for bid and the bid was awarded and they're working on finalizing the contract. So hopefully the study itself will start soon. And then um, the grant agreement is completed for the um, the old St. John's church building, which was the first step that had to be done. And, and it may already be signed. Um, it needs to be signed by Paul Kozob and the select board, but it it's um it's the wording is finalized as um, as best as I understand. So um, what we have coming up is in red, which is the two First Congregational Church projects. Um, and we'll start with those. So John, um, you sent a nice letter explaining and requesting, but why don't you go ahead and, and um, go ahead and talk about it? Uh, you probably are wondering why it's taken so long for us to A, uh, get the clock work, working on the steeple and also uh, doing any repair work on the uh, steeple itself. And what happened was last June, uh, we had a contractor that uh, was coming to start the project. And we then found out and we're told, which we were not given the information, that on the steeple itself, uh, we had to have a structural engineer uh, uh, sign off on it and have the paperwork and the uh, uh, stamping uh, and the fact that they would have to be uh, looking in at uh, what is going on with the construction uh, people doing the repair work uh, on the interior of it. And the company that we had there uh, at that point said they couldn't do it. So it put us in sort of a 
hard place. Uh, we needed to go out to find a structural engineer, and we also needed to go back out and find uh, a construction uh, company itself to uh, start uh, the process all over again. And we did find a structural engineer. Uh, he is the same one that is the engineer uh, in Amherst at the South, uh, the church in the South. Uh, and we are probably going to be using the uh, people that are doing uh, the steeple work uh, construction company uh, to also pro do the work for the steeple at the church uh, itself. It just has been, uh, we had both of them come and uh, spent a day with them uh, going over quite a bit of what is going on on the interior of the steeple itself. And uh, that was in uh, September uh, of 2023. And uh, it's sort of been on a slow motion, uh, even though we have tried to uh, speed up the process uh, to get the engineer started uh, and the plans uh, in place so that we can get this pr particular process started and uh, in work for the uh, construction company itself. We... On the first part of the process, uh, there we did ask for the ninety-five thousand dollars in regards to uh, what we felt was for the company that was coming down to do the steeple, and uh, we are sort of at a point that we don't have a solid uh, amount of information in regards to what it's now going to cost us to do the steeple. Uh, which we feel is going to be uh, quite a bit more money out there, but we don't know what that sum is going to end up being on our particular part. We're hoping, my conversations with the engineer, uh, we're hoping to have all the design work uh, completed and possibly uh, get the uh, construction company to do uh, the star process this spring uh, itself, and uh, we haven't, well, we sort of been hesitant and out there in regards to putting the clock back into uh, workability. All the parts for the clock are in Rhode Island at this particular point in time. They have been... Uh, redone uh they have uh, been processed uh but they're just being held for the company uh down in rhode island and in regards to we don't want to put it back in to be functional because of the fact that they would have to be pulled all out again for where all the uh pipes and uh metal are on the interior of the church itself. And part of the conversation now is uh, if, depending upon what comes up with the structural engineer, there is a possibility that they will, uh, or he will recommend that the uh, steeple comes down and they will do the repair work on that steeple on the ground level, not necessarily on the upper level itself. Uh, and I guess what we're looking at right now is if we can is extend both the clock and the uh, steeple funding uh, out there for at least a year, uh, if possible, just to be on the safe side for a second year also. Thank you, John. And I'm going to turn this over to Andy Morris Friedman. Um, I I am a member of the church, and I I'm not clear if this would be conflict of interest if I talk about it or not because it doesn't affect me financially. 
it's not a benefit to me financially one way or the other, but I am a member of the church. So Andy Morris Friedman, if you would take over leading a discussion and vote and everything, and, and I'll abstain from that. You're muted. You're muted, Andy. <clears throat> it's really the appearance of a conflict of interest that Mary's concerned about, because technically there is no conflict of interest since the CPA committee is not the controlling authority of the funds. But be that as it may, it, it's fine. Um, okay. Um, thank you for that uh, presentation. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments about the project or the request for the extension? No, I think that's good. Um, if it comes in more, is the church able to put in more, or do you think that they may have to ask the town for that, to ask the CPA for more? Uh, that's been a conversation we've been having with the committee at the church uh, for quite a while. Uh, we not certain we, we're a little hesitant on actually saying what the funding out there will be i have a funny feeling that the steeple will cost us probably in the 200 to 250 maybe 300,000 to do all the repair work that's going to need be needed on it uh but that's not anything to us at this point that has uh come from the engineering company itself so we're a little hesitant on uh, asking for some more money for CPA, just to the fact that we don't really know what the final results are going to be on itself. And one of the things, you know, any of you might be interested in is if you ever wanted to take a walk up into the steeple, uh, it's kind of interesting to see uh, how it was made and also uh, where all the concerns are in regards to the lean that is on the steeple itself. Uh, there's a lot of deterioration going on in there. Uh, there are two uh, large beams that are cracking uh, itself, and we're in the process of uh, uh, putting some straps around a couple of those uh, particular beams uh, itself just to make sure that they are stabilized for the time being uh, and uh, up near the or just below where the uh, bell is uh, there is deterioration going on on some of the beams the upper part of the beams from uh, moisture and uh, uh, a couple of other different things that are going on with some of the uh, siding and uh, railings on the exterior of the church. Thank you. Any other questions about the status of this particular project? Yeah, how was this? How was the 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 fund? How were the funds appropriated for this project? Was it was this for design and construction? Because it seems like we're get it seems like they're getting into a lot of design. Do we, we have to. Do we have to change anything uh, in our wording or anything like that to make sure that you know they they can they can take care of the design you know make sure that the design is good adequate and then maybe construction afterwards or is there anything that we have to do on our part? That's a good question uh, because when we originally uh, asked for the funding, it was really uh, the amount of money was going to the construction company. Uh, we had no knowledge uh, from the town itself uh, that we needed a, an engineer uh, design work, et cetera, uh, on the interior. Uh, we just didn't anticipate uh, that uh, we needed that type of design work for uh, the deterioration of the beams itself out there. Uh, yeah. And it, it was sort of a confusing situation uh for us just because that uh and i'm not sure i think it was 
maybe eight or 10 years ago that uh, on the south west side corner, they pulled out uh, one of the large beams uh, and redid that particular whole section. And I don't believe anything was done in regard to or needed to be done for uh, an engineer or anything else. It was just put it in place with uh, from another construction company. Sure, sure. Okay. No, no. I just, I, I, uh, I just want to make sure that you know. Listen, if if you've got to pay for the for, pay for an engineer now, you know, make sure that you know we we've got the we've got the suitable funds appropriated in the in the correct locations. I just I just don't want you to be going. You know, if we if we spent you know if if we appropriated the money for construction and and you go and it it you know it takes all that money to design do a design for for an engineer and then you come back to us and say all right listen it's you know we we had to pay you know fifty thousand dollars in a, in design work that somebody on our end doesn't or somebody on you know on our side says oh wait a minute we can't pay that we, that that's not how the money was approved yeah I just want to make sure that I just want to make sure that all you know those bases are covered okay John did the church sign a um uh an agreement. With the town, um, a recipient agreement, or was that before we we did that as a, as a practice? No, I thought we had something about they couldn't sell the building within so many years. I thought we did. Is that what you're asking him, Andy? Well, if there was a agreement that specified this amount of money will be used for this purpose. This will be used for. Not you know. that I know of, no. Oh, okay, so you so you have more flexibility yeah. as to what uh, what can you use the money for. Correct. Um, okay. It, it's it seems to me Good. that there are two with two options. <clears throat> we can either extend the um, uh, the the dates of the projects that we have previously approved. Um. And then if the, the the church needs more money, you can come back before us and try to get more. Um, or we can rescind these two projects and wait until you have a better sense of how much everything's going to cost and come before us again and get that amount. Okay. Um, do you have a preference as to which you would prefer? I think we've, I think we would feel better once we know all the information and where the uh, the amount of money that's going to cost us to do that uh, is stabilized out there, as opposed to just trying to do some major guessing on it. Um, so I think I think we feel more comfortable at this particular point just going with what we have in there and then come back to you uh, possibly with the request for adding some extra money onto it uh, at some point. Okay. And, and if you needed, you're going to need extra money for the engineer. So you can use this money for, for that purpose. If that's the first step. Uh, yes. I think that okay. will be the first step going, yes. Okay. And all we ask again is that you would let us know. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. You, will. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Are there any other comments or questions from the from the committee? We need to make a motion or something? or. Well, do we want to vote on it now or do we want to wait two weeks? I think we should wait two weeks and be consistent. Okay. Okay, I, I could see it either way, you know, but uh, John, we'd love to have you come back for a second meeting. Okay. Um, it's probably a formality, right? But, um, uh, and then uh, extensions like this are usually put in the uh, consent agenda at the beginning of town meeting, and there's usually never any debate or discussion okay. or anything. But just in case there is, you should have somebody there, you know, prepared to answer questions. Okay. We will. All right, and we will we will postpone a direct vote on the extension for the two projects uh, until our next meeting.
Okay. Um, yeah. uh, John, is it possible to like uh, get the clock and just reassemble it and keep it in the lobby or someplace at the church so people can see it? Uh, Rather than keeping it in Rhode Island, you know, who knows what could happen? Part of the problem would be I can ask the the uh, uh, guy that is doing the repair work on the clock itself. <laughs> the stand of the clock is up in the up in the tower, oh, okay. and all the pieces that go to it uh, would have to be re put and on it. And I don't know if he would be willing to. Uh, it's a good idea because I think we actually thought about that a couple of times, but the problem would be is if you try to put it all together, then he has to come back and put, take it all apart because the, the stairway going up to where it is, is very small and very steep. Uh, and it just would be uh, uh, a little on the difficult side for them to put it together and take it apart. Yeah, years ago, I was up there with Mary and um, um, Fred Oakley. And uh, one of the highlights of my Hadley life is <laughs> getting, getting the wine that clock. <laughs> it's, a, it's a thing of beauty. It's incredible. Oh, it, it, it's, it's very incredible. And the uh, guy that is doing it is uh, quite the guy. Quite the guy. <laughs> All um, right. Uh, and excellent. He's actually uh, just finishing um, his hike on the uh, out the trail uh, from yeah, down south all the way up. Yeah. All right. Well, tell him to take his boots off and get back to work. <laughs> so, all right. Well, we will. Um, I, I you know I don't know if you have to come to the meeting in two weeks. We can just let you know about the vote if you want okay. to come. Great. You know, All right. Whatever. And if there's no more comments or questions about this, I'll turn the chair back over to Mary. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So I'm going to share this one more time because we have one more thing to discuss. Um, and that is the Goodwin repairs and the Goodwin, Goodwin study phase two, which was for the elevator. <clears throat> they were both voted on at the 2020 annual town meeting. Um, and they both have been extended some more than once. Um, I got feedback from Carolyn Brennan on these and basically she suggested taking it back um, that the work that needs to be done there is in a big enough scope that this doesn't, they need to kind of start over. Um, they had put things out for bids, some they got bids on, some they didn't, and it just, it isn't what this money was gonna be used for isn't going to happen um, in the scope that, that they had presented. So these are to be used by 5424 and 62024. So I was going to, I actually like to vote on this stuff at this meeting just so that it's done and over with. It's not, you know, it's not stuff that we usually have to get more information on. Um, and that way it's, you know, it's one less thing we have to fit in next meeting. Um, but what I was going to suggest is maybe a vote to whatever funds are still in these two accounts as of June 20th, we vote to, to return. And it used to be that you have to clot back at town meeting, but the way the warrants have been written for the last few years, and I checked these two warrants, is that if it's not used in time, it's automatically returned in both the accountant and the town treasurer says that that means that we don't have to vote on it at town meeting. We can just have, you know, instruct the town accountant to return it to the undesignated or whichever account it came from. In this case, the 25,000 would be returned to historic resources and the 201,957.70 would be returned to undesignated um, fund balance. So, um, I was hoping we could make a motion to to do that, and um, well, I, can I ask a, a clarifying question? Yeah. Um, on the dates, the money is automatically returned. 
but we're going to have a vote to have it returned before then. No, and that would need a town meeting vote, right? No, I would. I I was gonna, and I can propose that that we vote that if the whatever monies are unspent as of June twentieth, twenty four, will then be returned. Either that, or we wait until August and take back, you know, whatever's unspent. But this way, um, before the end of the year, we can, you know, the fiscal year, we can have it returned to the undesignated. And the re part of the reason for doing that is, you know, this 227,000 could be used to help pay down the Hopkins borrowing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. it just, it seems cleaner to just, you know, instead of waiting till August, because the town treasurer is going to be working on that borrowing and where, where, you know, it just sort of helps with where the funds are. Um, so, so, so what's the date that we are asking the money be returned by? If by whatever is unspent, they're to use it up by June 20th. So whatever's not spent by June 21st, um, be returned. <clears throat> And, and five four on the other one. Yeah. Well, I would just say the twenty first for both of them, so that it's you know. Okay. Um, well, I'll I'll make I'll make that motion. Okay. Um, I would second that. Yeah. I mean, I would like to see the Goodwin repairs go forward, but if they don't have a plan, then yeah, let's not have that just sit idly. It's a lot of money to not be ever used. And that's yeah. part of the reason why we have the two or three year um, limit is that um, it, that way it just can't sit out there for a decade and couldn't be used for other things. And in this case, I certainly agree with you. The Goodwin needs a lot of work and hopefully, you know, they that's I know on their plate to to work on. I, I Hopefully it'll be sooner than rather than later. Um, was there a second? Did yes, second. I was the second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Or Andy, were you going to discuss? No, no, it's fine. Okay. I'll just vote. It's okay. late. Any other discussion? Are right. all those in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. Um, do you want to vote on the church one, or do you want to wait? Well, since we told them we were going to do it next time, maybe we should just do it next time. Okay. The last thing I want to do, I like to do two-hour meetings, and we're running up on that, is um, I do want to vote on the Code of Conduct. I think that'll be pretty quick because I forgot to do it in the fall. And I know um, so Jennifer is wanting to get them all the committees signed on that. So um, does someone want to make a motion to accept the Code of Conduct? As I would still move. Mark Dunn, any second? Second. Was that Ray? Yep. All righty. Um, any discussion? Yeah, I just want to say that our code of conduct is more strict than the Supreme Court's. <laughs> that doesn't seem right. <laughs> yeah. When Mary uh, recused herself, I said, you should talk to, talk to Clarence Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, but I digress. Yes, let's not go there. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstain? Thank you. So, just a quick look at next week. Um, I knew we wouldn't get through this whole thing, but I put it on here it's forever. How far we got? Um, Andy has an update on the steering committee of the Community Preservation Coalition that he's a member of. Um, we do have some expiring terms coming up June 30th, so we'll need letters um, showing that you're, you're extended for three more years or if you choose not to be that somebody else is from conservation. And, and I'm a little confused. Um, between Jessica Spank-Neville and Jennifer, um, James Saunders James. There was one said Andy Klopakis is up, and the other one said Mark Dunn's is up. Well, so I'm well. My term on the planning board is up. I'm up for re-election, so I would think that I wouldn't still represent the planning board if I don't continue with the planning board. Well, you know, 
You're right, but that doesn't necessarily mean that your term, your three year term, is up <laughs> on the CPC because it right. doesn't necessarily. So we'll figure that out, Andy Kay and Mark, before hopefully the March fourth meeting. I emailed them both and said, "Can you please, you know, figure this out?" But, anyways, um, there isn't a at large, so it won't be the select board. It's the individual committees, and then. Um, I had sent around a draft for the the CPA report for the annual town meet annual town report. She asked for that by um, February fifteenth. So, did did anyone have any comments on that, or did that seem fine? The oh, annual report that was the one that you know said what we've done last year and the changes in the committee and and um, what the votes were. Um, I think I sent you some recommendations, which I which I did make. Okay. Um, but I put all our names on it, so I wanted to make sure you were okay with it. If you want to look at it some more, I'll I'll do it after March fourth. I just don't want to. Um... I liked it. Okay. Didn't didn't you say it was due on the fifteenth? She asked for it for um, February fifteenth. Now, last year I sent it in February and she lost it and it end, and I sent it to her again and it still didn't end up in the final report. So I'm really <laughs> hoping this year it does. But um, well, I, I don't think it requires any kind of vote. Or it doesn't make anything, a vote. So. Yeah. I just, with everyone's name on it, I wanted to make sure oh. no one was, um, thought there needed to be something to be changed. And then the other thing we'll go over is the FAQ section. Um, so if anyone has thoughts on that, um, and then what to present at town meeting regarding the stats, you know, I've, I've talked a little bit about what the balance funds are and what's still outstanding and how involved to get. So just want some feedback. Um, and then some more on what Kayla will be doing for us. Um, she started gathering historic files. Andy sent her some and Edwin sent a lot and Amy Fiden did. So um, she's starting both physical and digital copy, you know, copies of applications as well as agendas and minutes and then what she has digitally. So she's agreed to take that on, which is fantastic. Um, the CPA terminology, just a quick. Um, so one thing Stuart Saginaw had said in one of his emails is that because I had said our open space set aside. And he said, you know, they're really trying to get every city in town to use the same terminology so that when there's a report sent in, everyone knows what they're talking about. And they're calling it open open space reserve, housing reserve, historic reserve, um, instead of set aside and undesignated um, fund. So, you know, we're, we're trying to get everyone to use that. So I'm sorry, Mark. No, instead of general, yeah, undesignated is good. I think so, too, because people used to think that meant it could be used for something else besides those three categories. So hopefully undesignated helps. Um, so that's that's why we're seeing a little different terminology and then our next meeting date. So, um, so that's great. All right. Well, anybody else have anything they want to say for this meeting? Yes, Andy, you're yep. new. We should redo the uh, phone list. Uh, so we have the phone numbers and emails of all everybody on the committee. Um, it's really helpful to call people up and talk about proposals and bounce ideas off of each other. To have new people call the uh, senior people with questions. Um, so I don't know how you want to do the phone list. Send your send your phone number and email to Mary and she'll put it together or that's fine. Put it in the chat. Oh, um, the chat unless you want everybody <laughs> to see yeah. who's watching the meeting to get it. You, yeah. can, Andy, you can certainly go ahead, Mark. Uh, Andy K had his hand up also. It was well, I would suggest, wait, let's just follow up on this. I would suggest yeah. everybody send it to Kayla. That's one. There you go. Good. Kayla. Okay. Yeah. There yeah. you go. And I think you all have my email. I had sent an email earlier today. It's just conservation at hadleyma.gov. 
and I can uh, put it in a spreadsheet and then send it back out. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. And welcome to Hadley. Do, do you do you live in Hadley? In case you need to speak Thank at you. town meeting or something. I do. You do. Oh, okay, that's great. That's very handy. Yeah. Andy K. Kayla signed up for a two-hour meeting tonight. We're running over the meter already. So I just wanted to uh, raise a topic for our next meeting. And, uh, and you know, um, some of you may have heard this before, but I'm after tonight's discussion about the clock and, uh, it, you know, concerns with the Hockenham Cemetery fence, um, I'm beginning to wonder about uh, if we can somehow get, and without adding a lot of cost, the applicant, try to get some professional resources for some of these projects that absolutely require them so they don't go out and realize that they do need a structural engineer or that their estimate that they had gotten from their friend who was a contractor was way off the mark um, or they wind up in a situation uh, like down in Hockenham where it's, you know, taken, things have to be done twice because they weren't done right the first time. And no, no offense to the people that are volunteering and putting their efforts in, but, um, you know, there's certainly, uh, you know, certain code requirements and the like that have to be met or proper, at least proper uh, approaches for some of these building projects. And I'm just wondering before we, you know, we're handing checks through a bunch of volunteers that are in a committee, that's great, but they've got it, got it to that point, but whether or not we should build in some form of if they don't have it already built in, like the town, we have uh, plenty of resources available with um, um, either uh, immediately available from the, the folks that are building professionals. If not, they 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 do have consultants um, um, available. But I'm wondering for some of these other ones, if how we can word some way of getting in a professional reference before we start, um, you know, building out money. Any uh, again. Just a topic for discussion for next week. I don't want to dig too deep into the to the clock right now, but I, I'd like to put that on the agenda. I just and give everybody a chance to um, simmer in, on that. We'll marinate on it. Thank you, Andy. That's a good point. And with that, Mark and Denise have been working on an application revision. And go ahead, Mark. Well, I, I had two things. And one, you just jumped my, I was going to give a shout out to Denise, who's done a lot of good work on the application form, and I'm pretending to help her. So she's been doing a great job. Uh, the other thing I wanted to just uh, piggyback on uh, Andy Morris Friedman's comment about a phone list and talking to each other. Just a reminder to anyone who's new, the open meeting law there, uh, it's not I see it as two things. It's, it's an open meeting law violation if you discuss issues of, of importance with a, a number of people that equals a quorum, or if you, there's also what's called in series. So if, if I talk to individually a number of people that adds up to that, that also. So just you have to be mindful of that. Thank you. And we'll, you know, we'd love to see what you're coming up with on the application for the next meeting as well. Um, if you're at that point and, you know, if it's something we could send out before the meeting so that people can look it over, that would be great too. Um, the next meeting is, is March 4th at 7 p.m. Um, again by Zoom. So um, that's when we're going to meet again. Anything else for tonight? Well, oops, I'm still sharing this. We can all see each other a little bigger. Well, again, welcome to Adam and to Kayla. And it's great to see everybody. And thank you all so much for your time. And we'll see you in a couple weeks. Motion to adjourn. It was nice to meet you all. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.